Okay, we got an outdoor access point here and we're gonna go over some weatherproofing here for the RF connections. Most typically the ones that are directly attached to the chassis here, are the ones that everybody's concerned about. Uh, now, there's a number of ways you can do this. I've got a couple of products here that I like to use. And we're gonna start with what comes in the case uh, with the access points themselves, specifically ones with external antennas. This is coax seal. So coax seal, uh, been around for a long time. This particular product here is like putty. The only problem with coax seal is it's messy. And so one of the things that you need to do with coax seal is, is you can't just put it on, in my opinion, directly to the connector. Because if you do, you make it a real hassle in the future for when you gotta pull that connector off. So I always like to put a barrier down on top of that connector first, just as a convenience for future technicians. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use some vinyl electrical tape. And I have in here some 3M Super 88, which, uh, is kind of the uh, industry standard for, here we are, some Super 88. This is industry standard for uh, outdoor, you know, splicing, whatnot, in this particular application. Uh, this particular stuff, it stretches really well, even in cold temperatures. You can get a little bit cheaper with like Super 33. So what I use, I'm in the Pacific Northwest. It rains a lot here, it gets cold in the winter time. So if you're working outside in the winter, it's nice to have the stuff uh, at your disposal. So here we are. Now, when we put this on, we wanna start from the bottom of the connector and work our way up, just like a roof shingle. If we go the other way, we're gonna let water in. So, and we also wanna rotate this in the direction of torquing of that connector. We go the other way, we're gonna actually back this thing off. So putting a little bit of force on there, I'm gonna just disconnect this middle port here since we don't need that in our way. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put this down as a convenience layer, trying to eliminate any air bubbles as much as I can. And again, the purpose of this layer is just to provide a barrier between the RF connection and the putty that we're gonna put on next. Okay, so we'll go ahead and little pro tip here, always let that tape relax at the end so that it has a chance to, uh, to actually adhere to the whatever you're sticking it to if you just let it Put it under stress it'll back off real quick and you're gonna have flapping edges in the wind okay so this coax seal let's put that on here now the coax seal you need to we don't give you a ton all right we need to be pretty pretty uh stretchy with this so we're gonna go on and we're gonna stretch it out pretty good i'd say about 50 to 60 percent of its length again and we're gonna overlap it just ever so slightly just as long as we get a little bit of a ridge on the overlap there. Okay, and then you wanna compress it down with your hands. Just give it a chance to set up and then my experience is that this stuff hardens up over time with exposure to UV. So you definitely want to follow that up with some more uh, tape over top of it all to uh, give it longevity. And in the same direction, you want to uh, you want to tape that on there so that you're, I think I, <laughs> in the last direction, I maybe went the wrong way, but we'll see in the playback. So there we are. We're just going to go ahead and put some tension on this and that will definitely help that coax seal get all settled in there. Again, you're not aiming for prettiness here, you're aiming for function. Okay, let that tape relax a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and tuck it in there. All right, so if you really, really wanna get, uh, you know, paranoid about this, you could put a zap strap or a zip tie over top of this, which will keep that tape from ever peeling back uh, as it ages. So there you go, that's the kind of a common way of doing this with what we supply. And the vinyl electrical tape is pretty much available anywhere. You could uh, use Super 88, like I say, or Super 33 at Home Depot. Another way of doing this is using um, what's called 3M 130C. And a 130C is a linerless rubberless, or sorry, linerless rubber splice tape, which have very high stretch, like 800% stretch. This is almost the same kind of consistency as the coax seal. You can see I've got two inch wide roll here. 
that's another option. Now, what I like to do, so you'd put, you know, the vinyl tape down, this 130C, and then, you know, the vinyl tape over top for weather protection and UV, uh, sorry, for UV protection. But what I like to use these days, and I'm finding more and more people using this, is um, silicon-based uh, self-amalgamating or self-fusing tape. And so what this does, this tape is really nice to work with. We'll put it on the bottom connector here. And I'm just going to cut about a foot off here so I can show you how this goes. This tape has a tracer in it as with a backing. So you, you really, the stuff sticks to itself. That's its whole idea. So that's why there's this plastic backing on here. So you got to be careful when you work with it. Otherwise, it'll just turn into a ball. And that white tracer is meant to indicate an overlap factor on this tape. So if I put this onto the connector, again, we're checking we're going to be going in this direction here. So I'm going to put that on. I'm going to go around. And this stuff is extremely stretchy. And it really doesn't stick to much other than itself, which is kind of cool. So as I run that in here, again, I am trying to make sure I'm getting exactly 50% overlap on that white marker. And this stuff, actually, unlike vinyl electrical tape, it won't back off. Once it's touching itself, it'll basically fuse together. Now, the manufacturer says you can leave that like that. I'm not a fan of that myself. I always put some black electrical tape over top of that, again, for UV resistance over the long haul. I keep uh, misplacing my tape here. So we're going to go ahead and throw on some of that Super 88 over top of this. And what I'll show you here is, is the difference in which this comes off. This is just incredible to work with uh, after several years on a tower or a mast. If you have to change an antenna out uh, or upgrade antennas, uh, this is so nice to work with because it, it just comes off so easy. Again, the outer layer here of this tape is not necessarily for anything other than the UV protection. And I'll let that relax. So there we are. So now to compare the two, uh, I'll just undo what I just did. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to nick the the uh, the coax seal uh, weatherproofing up here, and we're going to see that this pretty slimy. It, it's it's only been on here for a few minutes. But this stuff becomes almost like goo after several years uh, of installation and exposure to hot weather. And you can see that reason why we are putting that barrier underneath that level of, or that layer of Super 88, because it leaves this nice and clean. So there's the, there's the result there. Now let me go ahead and uh, do this bottom one here. We'll just undo what we did. I'm going to go ahead and put a nick in this. And what's interesting about this is you see it kind of almost opens itself up. There's so much tension on that self-fusing tape that it just backs itself right off. Nice and clean, really easy. And you can see there, this turns into basically one piece. There was multiple layers of tape there. You can't pull that apart now. So that's a completely impervious seal. It's really, really good stuff. You can get this with really high voltage ratings per wrap as well. The electrical utilities are seemingly increasingly using this stuff. Okay, so that's the uh, weatherproofing. Of course, we've undone all of that now. But uh, the next thing I want to talk about here is the bonding of the AP to ground. So one of the things that we're big on is making sure that in lightning protection is another conversation um, from perhaps another day debatable and, and again local codes are are the, the true uh, directive here but in a lot of situations an access point isn't necessarily the highest thing in the air and if you take a lightning strike directly on the chassis this is going to turn into molten metal anyway so lightning protection right on the ap although it's available um your mileage may vary and again depending on local conditions if you're here in the pacific northwest where we get maybe one or two lightning storms a year different story than other parts of the country um but grounding and bonding. Behind me here, I have prepared, poorly prepared, a uh, ground lug. Uh, this is not the best. You should 
probably have a little bit less exposed copper than this. Uh, but we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll use our tape and we'll actually seal it up nice. So we'll put a little bit of 130C down on here just so that we have a nice barrier. And then grab some of my other tape here. So this is a, a lug that we include in the kit uh, with every access point. And uh, as per our hardware installation guide, we really want to see every access point grounded and bonded, uh, if at all possible. Um, you know, local electrical codes will often require this, especially as an outdoor uh, access point. And so the, uh, the name of the game here is we've got an aluminum chassis and we've got dissimilar metals with the lug on the access point itself. So what we need to do is fish out the, uh, the actual screws for this. There we are. And we also need to find in the, in the box comes a little tube of what's called Penetrox. This is made by Brindy. Penetrox is an antioxidant compound for dissimilar metals. Very commonly used on aluminum connections. And uh, the idea is we want that ground to be nice and low impedance over many, many years of installation. These two little tiny screws here. And we're just going to put a little bead. We give you way more than you need for this. This stuff is gets everywhere. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a liberal coating of that on there. Smear it around the pad a little bit. And again, if you've got something to wipe your hands before it gets all over your clothes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the first lug in at the top here. First screw, rather. And this is just Phillips number two. Right-handed with the left hand in use. <laughs> so, there we are. And we'll just go ahead and pop that next one on there. Again, this is for show here, not for go. So, uh, of course, at the end of this, you're going to route down through your tower like we got here. This particular tower is grounded uh, to a ground screen that's 12 by 12 underneath the tower foundation, which is exothermically welded. So it's a solid connection, and the whole tower is, of course, grounded. So the idea here is we will take the end of this copper wire once this is up on the tower and we're going to bear this and put it on a, a grounding lug that's affixed to the tower using the same uh, compound again, Penetrox, on those connections. So there we are. That's what we're going to look like uh, in production. And of course, these connections up here, these uh, right angles, they're always fun to do. It's the same process all over again. You may want to treat these as two pieces. Um, again, this is where the silicone tape, I think, is all, a lot nicer to work with because it's so much more flexible and you can bend it around corners. But the options are open there and up to you. So, just gives you an idea of what's possible here and uh, the different methods. So, we've got 3M130C, we've got uh, Super 88 vinyl tape, I've got the Thomas & Betts self-fusing uh, or self-amalgamating tape I've shown you, and I've also shown you some coax seal applications as well. So one of the other things that I thought I'd make mention of before we go here is that there were some older antennas we sold. Now, this is the 2547 in white. This was common with the 1552 uh, and whatnot. This particular antenna actually had drain holes on the bottom, and you may be able to see that there on the camera. The important thing about this is that you would never want to tape up those drain holes. So you're taping below the connector, but not up into this part of the body. Then more modern versions of this antenna. Um, this is the 2568 obviously and 2547 is the same thing just a little bit shorter. It doesn't have these drain holes anymore so this was just a difference we had over the years. Uh, it's small upgrade if you will. One other thing I will point out is on our new access points the 9163 uh, on the Omnis that come with this this is a tri-band Omni we actually have a silicone boot on the bottom of that antenna. So you can see there the silicone boot is uh, right over that end connector and so that provides a uh, a nice kind of convenient way of weatherproofing this 
Again, you may opt to, in your environment, still put a little bit of tape over top of this. That's totally your call. But there's no drain holes in this connector to worry about as well. And the same thing actually applies to the directional patch uh, that we are now uh, making available for the 9163. So this is the antenna D1 and S. And you can see this is a four port uh, antenna. And all four ports on here are also the same thing. We have the, the rubber boot over the ends that you can slide on and uh, that helps seal things up. So you might find that helpful. Thanks again.